Hello, welcome to Cash in the Celebrity Attic, the show that finds hidden treasures in the homes of the well-known, helps them to sell them at auction for good causes. Now today, I'm off to meet a very famous female politician and broadcaster. In the early 80s, she used to be a reporter for breakfast television. But it was in 1987 when she made history by becoming the first black woman to be elected to British Parliament. She's also a regular pundit on a politics programme. Have you worked out who it is yet? Well, today I'm in North London and I'm off to meet the MP, Diane Abbott. A Cambridge graduate, Diane Abbott became a civil servant in 1976 before working extensively as a freelance journalist and a reporter for Breakfast TV. Her career in politics began in 1982 when she was elected to Westminster City Council as one of the country's first black female councillors. Since then, Diane hasn't looked back. She's appeared regularly on radio and television, including BBC One's late night political discussion show with Andrew Neil and the former MP Michael Portillo, who she first met while at school. And when Gordon Brown stepped down after the 2010 election, Diane also put her name forward as a Labour Party leadership candidate. Today she's joined by her friend Marsha, who works as an admin officer in central London. She and Diane have known each other for a number of years, and today they want to raise money for a worthy cause that they're both passionate about. 20 odd years. Coming up, will Diane's friend have the casting vote today? <laughs> and if I have a problem with antiques, Marsha is the first person I contact. A hefty tome offers a unique glimpse into parliamentary history. So your first words in the... My first words are in this book here. My goodness. And at auction, Diane comes clean about her collectibles. What I would say, though, is I didn't buy it with my expenses. <laughs> <laughs> To help us with today's rummage is antiques and collectibles expert Paul Hayes, whose keen eye will be invaluable in our search for hidden treasures. Hello, you two. Hello. I know you, Dan. I this know must you. make you Marsha, right? That's right. <laughs> have you dragged in some help today? I have. Marsha's my friend and she knows all about antiques. Well, that is good news. <laughs> I tell you what I do like the fact that you're working together. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Is, is this a way of relaxing from Westminster? It does. There's something. Do you have a garden? No, I don't. I've only have a little patio. Uh, well, there's something about greenery and tending to flowers mm. just makes you mm. very, very calm, and that's why I do it. Right, I like to see that. Now, uh, obviously, you're industrious, and I hear that you're a bit of an expert in antiques. Have you brought some stuff together? Yes, I'm not an expert, but I do enjoy it. It's an interest. Brilliant. Yeah. So what are we raising money for today, then? We're going to raise money for the Sickle Cell Society, which is a little charity which helps children and families with sickle cell, which is a rare blood disease which tends to affect people of African and Caribbean origin. Well, it sounds a very good cause. How much money would you like to raise? Well, I'd like to raise about £250. £250, that is the target. Mm -hmm. uh, now, have you finished watering the plants? Yes, we have. That is good news, because it's time to go meet the real antiques expert, Paul, and he's already rummaging in your house. Oh, my God. Oh, There's good news, don't worry, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Diane's lovely home is located in her North London constituency. Let's just hope it reveals a wealth of items that we can take to auction. As usual, it hasn't taken Paul long to find something that's caught his attention. Ah, hello. Hello. How are you? All right. <laughs> I found a nice painting already, actually. It's great, isn't it? Yes, that was given to me by a friend in Jamaica. Jamaica. Is that a major part of your life? Do you go back there often? I do. I go back to Jamaica most years. I mean, my family's from Jamaica. I was born here. Um, but I love Jamaica and um, it's a great place for holidays. Right. Well, I suspect this is what's happened here. Someone has deliberately painted this for the, the tourism market. Yeah. I love the label on the back here. It says, uh, 10 Tangerine Place, Kingston, <laughs> Jamaica. Hey, doesn't that sound really romantic? It does. <laughs> I want to go for my holidays. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but one thing that's uh, frightened me a little bit, actually, uh, it says here the price. The price is $8,000. That's, that's actually no. that's actually 8000 Jamaican dollars. <laughs> right. And so it's probably about 60 or £70 pounds when it was bought. Gotcha, that's a massive difference. <laughs> <laughs> I so thought we were trying to Van Gogh then. <laughs> it's it, a but... massive disappointment. Yeah. I was expecting a very short day there. <laughs> 
Uh, but saying that, it's very pleasing. Of course, we have a Jamaican connection. I mean, it's wonderful, it's colourful. It's a very thick oil painting. Looks great from a distance, this type of impressionist painting. Now, I'm not familiar with Henry Lowell, so I think what we should do, we should put this in with quite a conservative estimate about what it's cost, really, I think. Yes. But if we said sort of around the £50 pounds mark, sort of No, 30, that would be fine. That Does that sound all right fine. to you? Yeah. all right with you, Chris? That's all right with me, £50. Pounds of Hoping for eight thousand dollars. <laughs> It'd be fantastic. It, it would have been great, but never mind. Let's see if we can find anything else. Come on. Great. As we go our separate ways to look for what else might be worth taking to auction, I come across this very fetching 20th century ballerina print by Edward Degar. Diane's always been a fan of his work, and when she saw it in an online gallery, she immediately fell in love with it. Now she's happy to let it go to auction if it can raise Paul's estimate of twenty to thirty pounds. Meanwhile, determined to help such a good cause, Marsha's brought along something she's treasured for some time. Oh. Uh huh. Ah, now then, look at this. These are well polished. Oh, no. <laughs> Whose job was that? Is that your job? Trying to look at my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Takes a long time, doesn't it? I know. But the end result is lovely, don't you think? Yeah, I love it. So, so where do these come from? I bought these in my local charity shop. Really? I just like the look of it. And I'm a Libra. Ah, oh, right, okay, yeah, these are Libra, that's right, Libra Scale Company yeah. England. So do you often buy items from charity shops and places like that? Yes, it's, I love charity shops and sort of small auctions and markets and things like that. Do you go down the Portobello Road and the Camden Passage and all no, that? No, I can't afford it. <laughs> it's a bit more expensive these days. I tend it? to go to my local, I've got about six or eight really good local charity shops. I like to support them, so I go to them. And were they in this sort of condition when you bought them? No. Oh, right, so what did you have to do? Just polish them and clean them and can tell by my nails. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, that's, that's a really good thing. More often than not, people can see things in a, in a worn-out state and, mm. they, and they, they, they overlook it. But with a bit of hard work, exactly. the end result can be fantastic. And normally, because it's, it's in such bad condition, you get it cheaper anyway. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's one of the tricks of the trade, that yeah. one, I think. Yeah. OK, well... These are very saleable items, actually. Anybody that wants that retro feel to a kitchen, if you're going for a, a Victorian look, I mean, these are great things to have. And what's very saleable, actually, are the weights on their own. Really? Yeah, those are lovely. You've got the whole thing from a pound right the way down to half an ounce. Oh. So those would sell on their own in their own right. It's a wonderful, wonderful collection. But then you've got these cast iron scales. And, of course, you've got the, the brass pans, which look very attractive as well. Mm. How long ago since you bought them? Oh, about... Maybe eight, nine years. OK, yeah, yeah. right, and you've had them polished up since then? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> <laughs> I must admit, I made a special effort today. <laughs> well, you certainly have, and that's really going to help, actually. Yeah. Are you sure you're right to donate these towards our Yes, yes, day? because, I mean, I had it in my kitchen, my windowsill, for many, many years, but then I changed my kitchen, and, you know, over the years, you collect so many things, you can't always use everything. No. So. I mean, if I said sort of between 30 and 50 pounds, I mean, how does that sound? That'd be great. Does that sound right to you? <laughs> yes, yeah, All fantastic. Right. And I think yeah. they're perfect for the auction. I think uh, mm. you should balance things out nicely. Mm. Great, fantastic. <laughs> All right. What else you got in there? Let's have another one. Oh, Paul. Now, while we continue our search for more of Diane's unwanted belongings and take us to that £250 target, she's uncovered a brass key that isn't quite what it seems. It is, in fact, a memento from the time Diane appeared on the television panel game Through the Keyhole, hosted by Sir David Frost. The panel had to guess which celebrity lived in the house they were being shown. It's an interesting piece of TV memorabilia, and Paul thinks it would catch the bidder's interest if we set a price of 20 to 30 pounds. I'm going to show you something. All these green books here are the parliamentary Hansard, which are the minutes of every speech, of every debate, of every parliament um, since I became an MP. And this is the record of 1987, which is, in fact, the year I first became a Member of Parliament. So your first words in the... My first words are in this book here. My goodness. Well, I'm going to come to that in a minute. I want to take you right back. Your school career, was there a suggestion that you were going to enter Parliament? Well, what you have to remember is my parents came here from Jamaica in 1950 and they both left at school f at 14 and they really had no idea that their children would go on to do white-collar jobs, let alone become a Member of Parliament. Um, at school, I have to say I was a little bit mouthy. People <laughs> that remember me from a school do remember that. And I loved debating. 
In fact, I set up a debating society in school and used to run a special debating society for the younger girls. I've always liked debating. Um, I went up to Cambridge, which was a big deal, because no one from my school had gone to Cambridge before. And I had a kind of brush with the Cambridge Debating Society. And I spoke there in my first term, but I was so put off by all the posh boys and girls, I never really got into Oxbridge debating. Well, I've got to say, looking at all your photographs, um, there's a common theme. You're the only black pupil, the only black girl in many of the photographs. Were you aware of that at the time? You're not conscious as a child, but you know, I was the only black girl in my grammar school. I was the only black girl in my college at Cambridge. I was the only black girl doing a graduate trainee scheme with a home office. The only black person at Liberty. <laughs> and then I was the only black woman in Parliament. So I just got used to it. I began to think, well, that's just how it was. Now, you say you were put off by the posh boys and posh girls. Yeah. But obviously it didn't put you off in a career in politics. What was going through your mind? Because it was an historical thing. Female, black, MP. Well, it was historic and it did feel momentous to me, but I think it was even more momentous for other MPs because they were kind of in shock, all these dangerous... There were four of us got elected in that election and it was like, all these dangerous black people, what are they going to do? <laughs> are they going to wreck the place? You know what I mean? So they, in a way, the... MPs and the kind of people that run the House of Commons were more nervous of me than I was nervous of them. Did you uh, hold it back? Because I can imagine all, of all the things that you said, all the experiences you had at university and at school, this was a statement that you were making, not purposely, but this was a statement for history, wasn't it, in, in terms of British it politics? It was a statement. And my friends always say, you know, friends I've had from before as an MP, you know, Diane, if you never do anything else, you are genuinely a footnote in history and you can't, you know... That will always be there. I've got to say, I found it absolutely fascinating chatting to you and to think that your words are in these very famous books. It's brilliant. But you know what? It's not making us any money. No, it's not. Come, let's go and find Paul. <laughs> ah, if only Diane could bear to part with some of those prize volumes of Hansard, I reckon she'd be certain to meet her target. As they're not for sale, let's hope Paul and Marsha have managed to find something for us. He's discovered this Edwardian mahogany table that Diane acquired from a previous residence. With its intricate carved, gadrooned border, he reckons it could fetch somewhere between 100 to 120 pounds. Ah, uh, another Marsha. Uh, yeah. Oh, what have we got? I've got a set of eight of these. What do you think? Oh, it's a whole garth, are they? Mm. Right, and they the cry. Oh, they're not the cries of London. That's what he's famous no. for, isn't it? Which one are these? This is the Rake's Progress. All oh, right. Yeah, I mean, do you know the story? Do you know who this character is, Rake? Uh, no, I, I, know, I know the story, but I don't know who he was. It's either. a guy called Thomas Rake Well, oh, and he was yeah. a fictitious character in the 18th century. Yeah. And he inherited a fortune from a miser, a local sort of merchant, if you like. So he inherited all this money at a young age. And of mm. course, the moral is what yeah. happens to him then. Yeah. So as the pictures progress, it shows him visiting uh, various taverns, a ladies of ill repute, yeah, and gambling establishments, that sort of thing. Mm. He loses his fortune. He ends up marrying an old, uh, an old spinster, an old widow. An old maid. Yeah, an old maid, that's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then after that, he loses the fortune and he ends up eventually in prison, which I think this one is, is it? That's, that's him in uh, prison scene, there you yeah, go. Yeah, That's Bedlam. him in prison. And then yeah. I think later, Bedlam is uh, like oh, an Bedlam's, asylum, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, so was that the sort of story that you understood as well? Like, um... Yeah, yeah. I had a, you know, every time I looked at them, I thought, I better not go down that road. <laughs> <laughs> that's right, I think I'm up to number four now, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I said around the £30 mark, but mm. I, th I suspect them to fetch a little bit more, if we said between 30 and 50 and on the day if somebody likes them, I mean, how does that sound? Sounds great. It sounds reasonable yeah, to you, but yeah. is that what you were expecting, or was it a little less? Or is that thirty pounds each? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. There's right. a little bit. Helps. There's, there's a moral there. We'll show yeah. these to Chris and tell him where he's going wrong in life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, watch it, Paul. Now let's hope those pictures will bring Diana a sale price that she can feel proud of. Do any advance anywhere? But will they make what we hope? Things seem to be going well, but we're still not guaranteed to make that £250 at auction for Diane's sickle cell charity. So we need to keep looking and see what else we can find. Now, Marsha's brought along this EPNS or electroplated nickel silver Tazza with a matching glass bowl. Now, she bought it from a charity shop a few years ago, but the fruit bowl dates back to the 1920s. And Paul's put a price tag of what? Around £20 to £30 on it. Right, now then. And here was something I wanted to show you. Okay. It's a bureau, 
and um, I got it about 30 years ago. I was sharing a flat with two guys in Belsize Park when it wasn't as grand as it is now. And the guy that owned the house, one of those big sort of four-storey houses, he died. And the people that were missing the estate told us, the tenants, we could take whatever we wanted. Mm. And one of the things that we took, I took, was this little bureau. And I've never been sure whether I like the handles, but I am fond of it. And one of the things I like about it is the little cubby holes inside. And I have used it in the past as a proper writing desk. Right. Well, that's exactly right. I mean, the, the, the older bureaus have very, very elaborate interiors with leather tops and so on. This one dates about 1910, 1920. It's but it's a, it's a lovely small size and people. it's very popular for people that, because if you've got too large a piece of furniture, you need a large space to put it. Uh, but the nice thing about this one, it's solid oak. And, of course, nowadays when we buy furniture, most of it tends to be laminate or cheaper material. This will outlive me and you, this bureau. Yeah. Uh, and it has these wonderful barley sugar twist legs. Can you see that? And the interiors, I think, are often fascinating. You have sort of um, small sections to put your books and your letters and so on. You have a leather top. It looks very grand as you're writing your letters. The only snag with them nowadays is that people have moved on to computers. And the computer takes up a larger area. Uh, so these really are very suitable for a laptop or something like that, I think. Are you sure you want to, to, to part with it? Yes. I, I'm fond of it, because I've had it for over 30 years. But, I, yeah, I'd like to put it to a good cause. Excellent. Well, if I said sort of uh, around the £50 mark, sort of 30 to 50 as an auction estimate, how does that sound? Sounds good. Great. So the right is on the wall for that one, then. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's keep looking. She laughed, Paul, but I don't think she was impressed by your jokes. Don't forget she spent over 20 years debating with the sharpest wordsmiths of Westminster. Now, we know Marcia has a soft spot for antiques. I wonder if she's managed to pick up any tips from Paul. It's nice to take a, a bit of a break from our busy day. Are you having fun, by the way? I am having fun. Yeah. That's what I like to know. Are you learning anything? Because I, I know you're a bit of an antiques expert. Don't, I'm not an expert. <laughs> I've just got an interest in antiques. But I've learned a lot from Paul, particularly the story about the Hogarth's the rake was a, a real person. It was based on a real person, the rake's progress. Yes, who mm. drunk his fortunes away. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> was it, it wasn't your dad, was it? It wasn't my dad. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was Now tell me about you two, because uh, you've been, well, how, friends for how long? 20, 20 odd, odd years. years. <laughs> 20 years. How did you meet? Do you know, I think we met through a friend. Yeah, mutual friend. We met through a mutual friend. Yeah. And one thing I've always admired about her, actually, is her taste in antiques. So oh. it's really interesting. <laughs> 20 years later, we're doing a show about it. Yeah. Who would have believed it? <laughs> Come on, then. What sort of friend is she, then? How does your relationship work? Well, we don't live in each other's pockets, but if I, know, have, a, if I have a problem, Diane is the first person I'd contact to get a sensible answer. <laughs> <laughs> a and sensible if I answer. have a problem with antiques, <laughs> Marsha is the first person I have contact to get a sensible answer. Well, thank goodness you answered the SOS and come round, but yeah. because we need to raise some money. Tell me a bit more about the, the charity that we're raising money today. Well, the Sickle Cell Society is a really practical charity. It helps children and parents where the children suffer from sickle cell anemia, which is a very painful disease. It's a blood disease, which tends to be contracted by people of African and, and Caribbean descent. And we both know people whose oh, children... Oh, several people. Yeah, yeah. whose mm. children have had sickle mm. cell. And it causes mm. tremendous pain to the children. And the parents are often backwards and forwards to A&E, you know, hospital mm. Um, mm. emergency departments. And so what this money will go to is providing respite care for parents. Because these parents love their children, but it's a really 24-hour job looking after kids mm, with sickle cell. Mm, and this mm. will enable children to go away for a proper holiday so the parents get a rest. So this £250 will, I don't know, contribute to maybe a, a little bit of a break or some um, social services or maybe a nurse to, to look after the child for a week. Exactly. The £250 will make at least a family, if not more, happier and better able to cope with the challenge of sickle cell, whether it's a holiday, whether it's a special nurse, whether it's special services. So it's a really worthwhile cause. Well, it is a good cause, and we need that £250, don't we? So you ready for one last push? Yay. Come on, let's get rum I like her enthusiasm. <laughs> We've not long left to finish our search, so everyone scours the house for anything else that we might have missed. Marsha brings out a few more of her possessions that she's keen to put towards Diane's cause. She picked up these botanical prints 15 years ago when she used to look around at art galleries and second-hand sales. A set of nine, they date back to the 18th century, and Paul thinks they'll bag us 20 to 30 pounds at auction. Ah, now then, are you all right, Diane? This, um... 
This was downstairs in the Dino at Memorial Toilet. <laughs> and this, this is just a bit of fun, really. And uh, it's, it's real. Um, it's a proclamation of Diane Abbott Day. And how I got it was I gave a speech in Washington in 1992 for Black History Month. And the mayor of Washington at that time was a black woman, Sharon Pratt Dixon. And she declared February 21st, Diane Abbott Day. And I got this wonderful gilded proclamation. And I, I, I love it, not because it means anything really, but because it reminds me of my early days as a member of parliament. Because when I was a new member of parliament, I did a lot of speaking in the United States because they were just blown away to have a young black woman as a member of parliament because at that time they only had one black female congressman and she was much older. And the thing which really got them, I'd like to say it was my wonderful speaking <laughs> prize, but actually it was what they considered a cut glass British accent. They couldn't get enough of this black girl with braids. <laughs> speaking with this cut glass. Last British accent. Oh, so this is a memory of, of one of my big speeches in America. All right, Paul, I want you to have a closer look because I, I want to find out what do you do on Diane Abbott Day? <laughs> <laughs> do you eat pancakes? You, you bake cookies, you bake cookies and you decorate them with a DEA <laughs> on them. I, I like the idea of that one, Paul. <laughs> well, do you know, I've never handled anything like this before. I mean, it says here that um, the mayor of the District of Columbia do hereby proclaim that February the 21st, 1992, as Diane Abbott Day. Isn't that fantastic? in Washington, D.C., and uh, we call upon all the residents of this city to join me in saluting this fine individual That's for right. her contributions <laughs> towards furthering the causes of civil rights and the economic well-being of people everywhere. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah. What an achievement, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that really is uncharted territory, really, because yes. I've, I've never handled one before. I suppose it's a, it's a type of official document. They're always done under the, under the great seal. So yes. That would be the seal of the, of the mayor at the time. That's right. And uh, what an unusual thing to have. I suppose it's a bit like our indenture or uh, our documents that we have over here. Just well, if you're a official. freeman of a borough or something like that, it's that sort of thing. Well, that's right. Is that like you there, Chris? No, no one wants me. <laughs> <laughs> Sadly. Are you quite happy to give this away? Because it is it's such a rare thing, isn't it? Um... Yes, but it is for a very good cause. That's what I thought. Well, that's right. Mm. But uh, would, would you be happy to sell it? Because I'm, I'm not sure exactly what this would fetch, actually. I've never handled one before. If it can fetch something for the charity, that would be great. Right. But I, I will give it away because, for me, every day is Diane Abbott Day. Oh, oh, isn't that lovely? Well, we, we've enjoyed our day with you, haven't you? <laughs> OK, well, if I, if I said sort of um, 30 to £50, pounds, give it a chance, yeah. and I think if two people take a shine to it and celebrate, if we sell it on February the 21st, we're laughing, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what might also help on auction days, if you go up and do it yourself. But you think it would help? I think it'll help. Can you do it? Well, if it would help, I'll do it. You're not shy of speaking <laughs> in front of people, surely. Yeah, just a bit silly promoting something about yourself, that's the thing. But I'll do it, I'll do it. I know you wanted to raise, what, around £250, pounds. Well, conservatively, we think at auction we could raise £330. How does wow, that sound? Wow, fantastic. And it's for such a good cause. It is definitely for a good cause. We've had a great time. And who knows, if we do well on auction day, we may have Diane Abbott Day number two. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'd love to have a Chris Hollins day. Never mind. Fortunately, it's Diane's name on that unique piece of history, and I'm pretty sure there won't be any others knocking around the sale rooms. Also going to auction is that lovely set of scales that Marsha found in a charity shop. Let's hope at a price of 30 to 50 pounds they tip the bidding in our favour. Plus the very graceful looking Edward Degar print priced by Paul at 20 to 30 pounds. Will it appeal to any art lovers in the crowd? And there's also the Edwardian table. Estimated at 100 to 120 pounds, it's a decent sized piece of furniture and could certainly play host to a pretty large banquet. Still to come, will it be a landslide or a vote of no confidence for Diane's lot? Ooh. Oh dear. Ouch. Ouch. And sometimes even a member of parliament can be left speechless. Oh, that's not like it. Find out what happens at the final fall of the gavel. Well, Diane and her friend Marsha had a real mixture of items and we brought them here to T.W. Gay's Auctioneers in Norfolk. Now, Diane wants to raise around £250 for her charity, so let's hope we have a bit of luck today or a bit of divine intervention as those items go under the hammer. 
These auction rooms are teeming with lovers of antiques and collectibles, and amongst them is our Paul, who is still desperately trying to work out how much Diane's memento could be worth. Hello, Paul, nice to see you. Hello, Chris. How I are see you, you've got one of Diane's uh, pieces there. Yeah, I mean, what a unique item, actually. There's no one else that can say it has this. I mean, it's uh, February the 21st, it's Diane Abbott Day. What a wonderful achievement, don't you think? I haven't got a day, how about you? Uh, no, I've got Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> Now, what else do you think? Because we've got—I've never, don't think I've ever seen a, such an eclectic yeah. mix of items. Um, how do you think we'll get on? I think we're going to do all right, actually. Marsha was a, a real saver, wasn't she? At the end of the day, she brought along those fabulous scales, those fabulous Hogarth prints, which tells a story about me and you, doesn't it, Chris? <laughs> yeah. And I think uh, some really interesting bits. I think she's really helped the situation. Actually, we've got a tough day ahead, though. Two hundred and fifty pounds is quite a lot of money. It's actually harder than you think to achieve that sort of amount, you know. But I think we've got some good items, and uh, yeah, fingers crossed. Let's see. Let's let's proclaim that we're going to. Make it yeah, I'm talking about that. I'm going to get Diane to, I think, auction this herself. She's got to, hasn't she? That's a great idea. Come great on, let's idea. go and find her. OK. Well, Diane's no stranger to public speaking, having stood up in Parliament, and I'm sure she won't be intimidated by this crowd. Now, we're one item down on our rummage as Diane's decided to leave the Edwardian table at home. This means we're slightly under our £250 target today, but you never know which way the bidding will go. Here they are, nice to see you. How are you? Hello. I'm really fine. excited, fine. seeing all our bits laid out like um, real antiques. It's actually going to happen. I can't believe it. And you know, I've never been to an auction house at all, or an auction, so this is a first for me. Right, how about you? I've been to lots of auctions. She's my expert. She's your <laughs> expert. Yeah. Have you told her to keep her hands in her pockets I've and not to start bidding? That's the problem. Yeah. She'll be busy bidding. Yeah. You won't be able to get to our stuff. <laughs> yeah, whatever you do, don't wave to each other. <laughs> Is there any particular items you're really looking forward to going under the hammer? Well, one thing I'm really interested to see what happens is the Diane Abbott Day thing. I'm wondering if anybody will want to buy it at all. Well, it's funny you should say that because <laughs> we're going to try and give it something a little bit special. We may ask you to go up and auction it yourself. How do you feel about that? Well, it'll be very embarrassing, particularly if there are no bids, but because it's for charity and it'll help to move it and get it sold, I suppose I'll do it. You've done a bit of public speaking before, haven't you? Yeah, I've done a little <laughs> bit of public speaking, just Thank a goodness tiny bit. That. Right, just let's get into position, because the auction's just about to start. Come on, follow us. <laughs> if you'd like to have a go at raising money by selling at auction, be aware that sale rooms charge commission fees. Prices vary from one sale room to another, so it's best to inquire in advance. First item, the wooden bureau. Wow. Do you know, I've had that bureau for over 20 odd years. I was in a flat, the landlord died, we were able to take any furniture we like, and I took that bureau, and it cost me nothing, so I'm really looking forward to how much it will go for. Well, we'll have to wait and see, Paul, we reckon? Uh, between 30 and 50 pounds. It's a nice little bureau, not as usable as they were at one point, but uh, nevertheless a nice example. And uh, someone start me away on this. 30 pounds and bid me, surely. 30 pounds, anyone and start me away. Little bureau there for 30. 20 pound and start me, surely. 20 pound, nice little bureau there, you see it for 20. 10 and go. Got to be worth a 10 of this one as you see it there. 10's bid, 12 I'll take. 10 pound got now, 12 is there. 12 is bid, take 15 now. In front of me at 12 pounds, surely more. It is here to sell away. 12 pounds, any more, anywhere? Oh. Well, I don't know, I mean, they just didn't like it for some reason. I think, you know, they, they are a thing of the past now, these sort of bureaus, yes. but you'd have thought for, for £30, what a bargain. No, the auctions, yeah. The auctions, yeah, yeah, yeah that's exactly. <laughs> you Be positive, Mark. Oops, not a good start for Diane and Marsha. Maybe there are just too many of those uh, bureaus knocking around. Something a lot harder to come by, however, is this curiosity from a bygone era of daytime television. One of my favourite items, I threw the key, whole key. I'm very proud of that, I must say. When they put the actual show out, people guessed me very quickly. It may have been all those green Hansard books and copies of <laughs> parliamentary debates that gave the game away. So. <laughs> well, it's a unique item, Paul. Yeah, it is. I mean, this is something that you can't buy. You have to actually appear on the programme to get one of these items. So it is unique. Uh, it's a, a good bit of fun, actually. Any, any fans of the show, fans of yourself, it should be a good selling item. Uh, but it must have been a big lock. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely novelty piece, 30. 20 I'll take then and bid me is there. 20, 10 and star me, surely. As you see it there, super piece. 10 bid, 12 is there. 10 I have in front, 12 anywhere else then. 10 pound is the bid, surely more on this one at 10 pound. Is there 12 anywhere? Maiden bid then, 12 got. 15, 18, 20. Yeah, 20 like is the middle now, two is there on the key. As you see it there, super piece. Don't see these every week at 20 pound the bid. Two now is there, we'll sell at 20 pounds. 
There you go. Oh, that's that's nice. more like it. 20 pounds, 20 to 30 and 7 yeah, inches. That's, that's, Is that all right? Yeah. That's all right. <laughs> Your little face got quite excited. I know. <laughs> Phew, for a minute there, I didn't think we were going to make Paul's estimate, but fortunately this novelty key unlocked one bidder's wallet. Also valued at 20 to 30 pounds is this Degar ballerina print, which Diane found in an online gallery. I think this is so attractive, it's such an unusual picture. Was this like a, a family item or something that you've, you've bought yourself? I ordered it from the Tate. It's not on show in any of their galleries, but they do have it in reserve. And everyone loves Degas ballerinas, and a black ballerina is so unusual. I ordered it specially and had it framed. So a wonderful thing to have. I mean, it's, I mean obviously, the original would be um, several <laughs> notes. <laughs> <laughs> but we're hoping for the top end, maybe about £30 for this. It's a nice example. Uh, but what, what a great thing, what a great thing to have. Nice decorative piece, as you see. Interesting style there. Uh, someone start me away. Bid me on this, start me at £30. 30 or 20. 10 and go, surely. Bid me is there on the ballerina as you see it. £10, surely. Start me away as you see. I'll take five to go then. Five pound is there anywhere. Five's bid. Six I'll take. Six bid. Eight do you like? Eight bid. Come on. Eight's in front. Ten I'll take now is there. At eight pound is there surely more. Got disappointment in the corner at eight pound the bid. Ten now is there. At eight pound it is. Ten anyone else? Surely. At eight pounds it will sell away though. At eight pounds any advance? Ooh. Oh dear. Ouch. Oh, such a pretty picture. It was lovely. They're just not interested in that particular style at all today. Paul. I don't understand that at all. Hmm, Diane may be a bit disappointed with that result, but it's early days and we've still got plenty more to go under the hammer. Okay, up next is that really colourful oil painting. It was given to me by a very good friend. I think it may be an afternoon dance or even a spiritual ceremony. I love it. I hope the people at the auction do. £30 bid me, surely. Start me away, £30. Anyone on this one, as you see? 30 or 20 Surely £20 and bid me, as you see it there, or 10 to go, then. £10, anyone bid me? 10 is a start. 12 I'll take. We have a £10 start now, 12, surely more. 10 is the bid. 12 I'll take, surely, on this one. 12 bid. 15. 15's middle, 18 I'll take. It's £15 middle of the room. So can I just say something else? It cost 8,000 Jamaican dollars, that painting. <laughs> if that helps, 8,000 Jamaican dollars. <laughs> oh, sorry, mate. <laughs> £15 is uh, middle of the room at £15, the bid 18 is there. And £15, surely more, as you hear, 8,000 Jamaican dollars at 15 is in the room. Any advance anywhere? We'll sell away. 30. 30 bid, thank you, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. Very nice. 30 the bid and selling away. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> you did help. <laughs> I did help a little bit. <laughs> I might get beaten up after, wasn't it? He did look quite big that day with a £15 bid. <laughs> You're in trouble. A uh, good bit of heckling from Paul there. It seemed to do the trick, but we're still quite a way off making our £250 target that Diane and Marsha want to give to charity. Now, perhaps we'll have a little more luck with some of Marsha's pictures. These botanical prints are from the 18th century, and for £20 to £30, they must surely take someone's fancy. Where did you get these? I bought those at an auction room in Chelsea. When I had my first house, I had bare walls, nothing to put in them. And I looked around, and then I found them. I particularly like them because I love nature, I love flowers. And I've had them for many years, and I shall be sorry to lose them, but it's for a good cause. I've got interest here on my sheets that put me straight in at £15. I'll 15. take 18 on these. £15 is the bid straight in, 18 I'll take. As you see them at £15, the bid now, 18 is there. 18 bid, 20, 2, 25. 8, 30. 30 with me, two I'll take. I've lost you back, are you sure? At 30 pounds now, two is there. It's on commission with me then. At 30 pound the bid, is there any advance anywhere at 30 pounds? Brilliant. Well done, that's, a that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's top of my estimates, so great. Yeah. Well done. Yes, that's more like it. A really good result there, but how are we faring at this point in the day? OK, gang, it's the halfway stage. It's been tough going, hasn't it? <laughs> it's so, it's so stressful. sort of pet stressful seeing your little mm. bits and pieces on, on the auction block. But you've kept it together emotionally. Yeah, but it's been difficult. <laughs> <laughs> it has been very difficult and we've, we've had to work hard, haven't we, Paul? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the Bureau was the big shock for me, actually. I think that was quite a low price, but... It, auctions are very funny places, but we have some great items yet to come. Well, I think you're doing OK. I know you wanted to raise £250 for your charity. Well, at the halfway stage, we've got £100. Oh, there you go. Not 
Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Early days, I like you. She's so positive. I love you. But it is the halfway stage. Plenty to come. But in the meantime, let's go and have a bit of a break. And you look around see if you can find anything interesting. Come on. So as we go our separate ways around the sale room, Diane finds herself drawn towards a framed antique map. I wonder if it's stirring any happy memories. This caught my eye. Partly because I love antique maps, I've got a lot in my home, but also it's a map of Cambridge, which is why I went to university, not far from this auction room. The interesting thing is, it's got all the colleges on it, but not my college, because I went to Newnham, a woman's college, and actually, women couldn't go to university at Cambridge until well into the 19th century, but it's still a lovely map, and I'd love to have it. Watch it, Diane. You're here to sell, not to buy. In the end, that map went for a very reasonable £18. Looks like today's bidders really are after a bargain. Now, Diane's next slot under the hammer is that set of nine pictures found by Marsha detailing the rake's progress. These are quite, quite an interesting story, actually, but these were yours, weren't they? Mm. I like pictures that tell a story. And again, I have lots of intervals, bare walls to fill, and they were coloured as well. And the friends are really nice. I like the friends. And do you like these, Diane? Well, I love them, but I wouldn't live, have them in my house. I've never lived anywhere as grand as mine. <laughs> my start's straight in on this one at £20 bid, straight in, take two anywhere. £20 is my bid and two I'll take. £22, £25, £28, £30. Two and I'm out. My bids are out at £32 now, five is there. Middle of the room at £32 is the bid and five I'll take. Is £32 the bid now, five surely more? £32. I'll sell him away at £32. Any advance anywhere? How much did you value them? 30 to 50, so we're about in the middle there, yeah. but we're, we could have done one going away. Yeah. Really. We could do with you being wrong. Yeah, we could do with you being wrong. <laughs> Hmm, maybe I should be careful what I wish for. Things are picking up, though, with those Hogarth pictures making our estimates and putting more money in the kitty towards the Sickle Cell charity. Up next, we've got the scales. Are these yours, Diane? No, they're Marsha's, but I've always liked them. She's always had them in their kitchen. They look beautiful. Oh, right. So they're not in your kitchen anymore? No, I've gone digital. <laughs> 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 well, let's hope we need a digital calculator to add up the money we're going to get for Paul. Lovely set there, you see. 30 and start me. 20 in bid then, surely. Don't make me go any lower. 20 pounds, surely, bid me on these. As you see, they're worth that all day. 20 pounds, anyone start? 20 bid, thank you. Two are you? 22, 25, 28, 30. 30 is in the middle, take two now, is there? 30 pounds, two anywhere else. Is standing left at 30 pounds, 32. 32 is now in front. At £32, the bid is F5. Anyone else? At £32. £32. My good, but well, they make us work hard, don't they? <laughs> it was a bit scary. I was going, £10. I know. Marsha's scales made their estimate, but the question of whether we will reach our target of £250 still hangs in the balance. Up next, it says a Taza, Taza, tip. What is it? Taza. Me, Taza, you, Jane. <laughs> <laughs> Now this is a, uh, basically it's a fruit bowl really on a stem and it's part of a, of a set really for fruit. So is that what you used it for, for fruit? It's quite decorative as well, sometimes I just, I just keep it as an ornament. It has been slightly over polished, lots of the silver's been worn off. Keep a good house. You do, it's therapeutic. <laughs> I do have interest here, that puts me in, we are below the guide though, uh, just £15, 18 I'll take on the Tazza there. £15 is the start, 18 I'll take as you see it there. £15 the bid, 18 now surely is there. £15, 18, 20. With me at £20, two I'll take. £20 I have now, two, two, five. Five still with me. I've lost you both, middle at £25. Is there eight? Anyone else? At 25 it is. Any advance? We'll sell away. There we go. So you've got such lovely taste, Marshall. That's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> He's so the nicest thing. <laughs> Well, I think Marsha could turn out to be our lucky charm because that's yet another lot which has made Paul's estimate. OK, it's the final one, the big one. The proclamation, how are you feeling about this? Very nervous. It's so embarrassing trying to auction something with your name on. You'll be all right, won't she? <laughs> yeah. Yeah? Come on, away you go and do your best. The last charity lot of the day, so we're going to invite uh, Diane Abbott to come and sell this. Hopefully she won't be too good and do me out of the job. Take a seat. This is a framed proclamation of Diane Abbott Day. 
I cannot tell you how embarrassing it is to try and auction something with your name on it. Um, what I would say, though, is I didn't buy it with my expenses. It was, actually, it was actually given to me over 20 years ago when I was a brand new MP. I was invited to Washington to make a speech and the then mayor of Washington proclaimed that day Diane Abbott Day. And um, I've kept the proclamation ever since. Start us away, come on, 30 pounds, bid me on the proclamation. It's gotta be worth 30 pounds, surely. We've got 30 here, we've got two here then, two it is. Five, anyone else, it's 32. We're back at 35 then, over here at 35. We're on the right, 35, eight, is there anyone else? We're back at 38 pounds, 40 again, take two. 40 it is here, two anywhere. 40 pound it is, two anyone else on the right here, 40 pounds and we're all done. At the 40 pounds, two front again then, we're still at 42 pounds, is there five? At 42 front, five are you, 45 back in then, eight is there, at 45 pounds, still right, eight is there then. At 45 pounds, any advance, 45 it is. 50 is front, I've got 50 front now, is there five anywhere? 50 is front, we'll keep going, 50 it is, five anywhere. We'll sell away at 50 pounds then. 50 it is. is that all right? embarrassing. I've never done that before. Well, <laughs> you see, you've done all these speeches, you've been in the House of Parliament. <laughs> that was tried... the most nerve wracking thing? One of the most nerve wracking things I've ever done. I've never done an auction before. I didn't know whether, whether people were picking their nose or bidding for the thing. I really, well, we really did Really, really well. Well done. Well done, Diane, and I bet she's secretly relieved that the proclamation with her name on it sold for Paul's top valuation. But will it be enough to have made our target of £250? Well, that's just about it. You were so good up there, very, very brave. So nervous. And we got a good result with the M4 mm. that last night. Fantastic, yes. But that is it. It's time for totalling up. I know you wanted £250 for your charity. And the audience, let's say, it's been tough going, Paul, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> to say the very least. And I think we've done really well, because the grand total we've raised is £239. Ooh, oh, there we go. We have done well. Uh, OK, gang, that is just about it. I think you were very brave with that last item. Well done. We've had a great time, haven't we, Paul? Oh, yeah. no, Brock, I felt like I'd been in the House of Commons today, <laughs> in opposition. <laughs> The money raised by Diane will go to the Sickle Cell Society, a charity that helps children who suffer from a rare blood condition which predominantly affects the African and Caribbean community. I chose it because it's not well enough known and because it does really good work helping children often spend most of their lives in pain. And the money we've raised will help some family to send their child off to respite care and will make a child's life a lot happier, so I'm very glad we've been able to raise the money that we did. So poor Diane didn't quite reach her target of £250. We were only £11 short, and all that money does go to a good cause. Now, if you want to raise some money for something special and you think you might have some hidden treasures in your home, then why don't you apply to be on the show? All the details are online at bbc.co.uk. Good luck, and I'll see you next time on Cash in the Attic. <laughs>